Hey folks, Jesse with Southern Rose Fishing and today I'm continuing some work on my 2019 Outback um, and what we're going to be doing is putting some Boondocks landing gear on it. I tell you what, I have it on my other kayaks and if you're in question whether or not you should purchase this, don't hesitate because you won't regret it. It is literally the best upgrade I've ever done to any of my kayaks. So. Now, on their website, they don't actually have a kit available for a 2019. I called them and talked to them, and what they said to do was when you order it from their specific website or straight from Boondocks, is to basically purchase a 2018 kit and earlier, but put in the comments that it's for 2019, and what they're going to do is it include a longer center crossbar is the only difference. That way it will work for the 2019. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to kind of walk you through the process, show you the ins and outs, what I've learned doing it prior and uh, get this rolling. Let's do it. All right, folks, just to show you real quick, I went ahead and unboxed the setup that I got from them. It basically comes with the two wheels. Now I go with the Sea Tug wheels, I think they are. They're non-flotation wheels. These are very nice when you uh, launch in like boat ramps and stuff because you can deploy them while you're still on the water. You don't have to worry about tilting the kayak up on its side and trying to deploy the arms once you land. You can actually do it while you're still on the water, so that's very nice. It comes with the longer arms on all their kits now. Of course, you got the clips right here that you know secure the wheels on the arms. The two mounting brackets here uh, that actually mount to your kayak is pretty self-explanatory. Of course, you got the rod here that goes in between those two like that. You have the two mounting bars here specific for the Outback. The locking pins that basically lock this bar you know, through these little holes here. Of course, the four mounting bolts and washers. And they also send these uh, little bungee straps here. Now, this is what they use to replace the little thumb screw that used to be on top of the knuckles right here that they used to secure the legs in here. They had massive problems with that, with them falling out, going down the road, rattling loose, so they just did away with it all together. Now they suggest securing them with bungee straps, which I've done for long distance trips, and I've never had any problems with them falling out. So that's pretty much everything that's included in the kit. And we're gonna jump right into installing it. All right, folks, we're set up here at the back of the kayak, and I pretty much have the seat folded down so we have access to this. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is lay these in place and kind of mock up where I'm gonna mount it at. Uh, it's your choice pretty much where you put it. There's no actual uh, given directions like in the kit as far as where you mount it. And I'm basically gonna go ahead and just stick the center bar in and kind of get it to where I want it. I, I'm gonna basically mount it as far forward as I can. The one on my other Outback, I kind of mount, mounted it back a little bit like this to where it was into the cargo area just a hair. And it caused an issue with me being able to run my live well in the cargo area. So I'm, I'm going to end up having to reposition that, which I'm not happy because that's more holes that I have to drill in that kayak, but you know, my mistake. So this one here, I'm basically going to slide it as far forward as I can to where it just clears the seat to make sure to keep, you know, these parts here free of this cargo area. And so I've got it there and I'm going to check just to make sure the seat clears it in all its positions. Yep, it looks good. All right, so that's pretty much where we're going to mount it right there. And I go ahead and slide these knuckles out to line the holes up. Let me grab the camera so I can show you this a little better. All right, as you can see, maybe a better shot like this. I've got it lined up directly in the center. The seat and everything clears it fine. You know, it comes up and down and misses everything. And you pretty much slide these out to where these holes are in the center of this outside portion. Still got plenty of room to access my clips right here for hooking things. So that's pretty much exactly where I want to put it. And at this point, I'm going to grab a marker and go ahead and mark two locations here on each side to where I'm going to drill for the mounting holes. So, oh yeah, just real quick. These are pretty much everything that you're going to need to do this. You know, a Sharpie a quarter inch um, Allen wrench, a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit. I like to use some sealant when I put the bolts in just to seal the holes up. A piece of wire, and I'll explain what that's for here in a minute. And oh yeah, something else real quick. Something that I determined just by putting the first kit in that I did is that these round bars right here, they come pre-threaded basically. And when I did the kit in my first Outback, I noticed that when I threaded the bolts in, it would thread all the way into the bottom of the threads and then it seized up. Thankfully, I checked it before where I actually fished this all up inside of the hole and that would definitely prevent you from mounting it. So what I recommend doing is take in a 5 16 by 18 tap and actually running it through these threads and cleaning it out because I checked these and they were the exact same way. And basically what would happen is this bolt would run down flush with this bottom edge right here and stop. And if you had this up inside your hole and ran into that, that would be a pain to deal with. So 5 16 
by 18 thread tap. Go ahead and run it through these holes and clean them out before you try to do this. All right, so I pretty much have this centered up where I want it. Everything's looking good here, so I'm gonna come in and just make a mark in the center where I'm gonna drill. Make sure it's straight, hold it up, mark it. So there, we pretty much have our guide for where we're gonna drill. So now it's just a matter of drilling the holes. All right, folks, we're about ready to drill it now. I've already looked up inside just to make sure there's nothing in this area as far as any cables or anything, and we're, we're clear, we're good. So you pretty much just take a 3 8 drill bit, drill some holes in your brand new kayak. Hit the shot back, clean it up real quick. All right, so there we go. We got the holes drilled. That's pretty straightforward. Now we're pretty much going to get everything set up to mount the system. All right, so I pretty much had the system reassembled. Everything is still just loose right now. Okay, I'm going to adjust it all afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and slide these out to where they need to be. All right, now you grab the four bolts and washers, basically set them up like that. Have them ready to go. Two on each side. All right, and then you got the two bars that you have to actually get up inside the hole in this area on each side. And this is, can be the tricky part, but there's a little trick to this to make it a whole lot easier. That's where this length of wire comes into play. Now you can use anything for this. Uh, honestly, a coat hanger or a length of wire. This is just something I have to have laying around. And what you want to do is fish it through one of the holes, kind of bend it a little bit, and just stick it down inside the hole of the kayak towards the back. Now I'm fishing it through the back hatch area, which I installed in a previous video. You can do the same thing with the front hatch area, fish it through that. A little more aggravating because you got all the foam blocks in the hole, you know, I have to pop those out and make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna do it through the back hatch since I have it. And basically reach up inside the kayak once you can get a hold of it. And just pull the wire out like so. And then you go ahead and stick it through one of the bolt holes like that. What I'm gonna do is just tie a quick little overhand knot in it. All right, so basically I have it set up like so. A little, just a little knot to hold it. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of feed it back into the hull. And drop it in. Right up. And what it does is it pulls it right up into place where you're just as pretty to where you can actually start your threads on one of your bolts. All right, so I got it up in place. I can see the threads, they, they lined up nice. What I'm gonna do now, is I just have some urethane sealant. This is just uh, some white sealant that I use for doing doors and windows. Kind of just shoot some around the hole right here just to make sure it seals up. In a way, it's kind of kind of like a thread locker as well once it gets in the thread, so that'll help the bolt stay in place. And then pretty much just take this bolt and start it. Might have to play with it a little bit to get the threads to line up. This one went right in, no problem. You wanna take the uh, quarter inch um, Allen wrench, pretty much set it in there and just kind of snug it for now. At that point, what you can do is just take the wire, force it back down into the hole, gotta hold it in, and then you just feed the length of wire back through, pretty much. All right, that point is on time or not. Pull this out. And then go ahead and seal up the next area, that bolt. There you go, it's just that easy. One side is mounted. All right, now we're just gonna repeat it on the other side. Run it down as well. All right, there you go. The worst of it's done. It's pretty easy from here. All right, folks, next thing is actually securing this center support bar right here, and you use these little Allen bolts that they give you with it. Uh, I believe it's an eighth inch Allen wrench. I'm not sure, because honestly, I can't read the size on it. Before I cover that, though, is something I want to talk about, a little mod that I have done to my kits. These arms actually slide into this area here and secure up. Now, you're supposed to, like, center this bar here, you know, in between and secure it with two screws you know, on each arm. I noticed when I did that, that the arms only went in about so far, they kind of stuck out a long ways. I didn't really care for that. Basically what I did is cut the center bar here down in length. That way, when you slide these legs in, I basically want enough room to weld it where they will go all the way in against the start of the bin right here. I want them basically in as far as I can into the kayak. You have to trim this bar here down a little bit to give it enough room to where to do that. So I kind of lay it up here basically set it up on top and just figure out how far in it would need to go about right there now I come on to the other side over here basically figure the same thing just kind of hold it in place about where it would be when you slide it in that far and then make a mark on the bar basically flush with the end of the leg right here 
go ahead and cut that length off of this bar. That way the legs will slide in as far as they can. It's just something I like to have them, everything as close into the kayak as I can. I did it on both my other kayaks. I haven't had any, is any issues whatsoever. I mean, there's still a good, you know, two and a half inches of this bar into the knuckles here. So I don't really see where it would be any issue. So basically I don't just go cut this with a hacksaw real quick. All right, folks, here we go. I got it all cut. I'm just gonna hit the end of that cut with some sandpaper. Just kind of deburred a little bit. So now at this point, I just slide the bar that we just cut into place. I'm gonna go ahead and take both legs and insert them pretty much all the way. And what that's gonna do is basically show me where that bar needs to be centered. All right, there, in as far as I can go. And it's perfect, I got just a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take those little um, Allen bolts here and insert it into the outer holes here and snug them up. Now to give you four of these, and there's actually four holes in this knuckle here, but where we cut this down and made this little mob, we're only going to use two. Once again, I haven't had any problems with mine doing that. And we pretty much will go ahead and slide these in as far as we can in the mounting bolts, because I want them in as far as they can go. So we got everything pretty much where it's going to be positioned. So we go ahead and tighten everything down. Go ahead and snug these up as well. Hand tight on all of this. Do not put a ratchet on it. You will notice as you're tightening these that it spreads the hole just a little bit right here where that round bar is actually a little bit thicker than the opening that it's going into. Don't worry about that, that's fine. That's why you're really only going hand tight. And also that's why you would use, I'm using this sealant here to seal the holes basically as lock tight, or you could use some blue light tight as well. That way you kind of just get it to where it's snug. And then once everything dries, it ain't going nowhere. All right, now it's time to mount the wheels. All right, well, this is pretty much straightforward. Decide, you got three positions here on the arms that you can choose how you want to position your wheels. On the others, I kind of positioned them all the way out here as far as they would go. On this one here, I'm thinking I'm going to position it on the two inner holes. That way it keeps more of this extra cargo area right here clear. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. And you just insert clips through the holes and clip them. All right, folks, that's pretty much it. The only other thing they give you is this bungee cord. Now, this is what they suggest using nowadays to secure the legs on the kayak. And pretty much all you do with these is slide these little, uh, they give you these little round sleeves here and a little end piece. And you pretty much just slide the sleeve on first and you take and you force the bungee strap up into this end piece right here, if you can see that, all the way. You gotta make sure you get it all the way in there. I gotta push on it hard. And then you just slide the little locking piece into place. And I was taking a pair of pliers that actually helps this out to where you can just kind of squeeze it like so and force it up into place. There you go. And it locks that end on it. And you just repeat on the other side, same thing. And then you basically have the bungee strap that they send in the kit. What they recommend doing is actually hooking it in the eye loops of the clevis pins. Not the end that opens, but the other end. Basically hook it through, through the wheel. Hook it through the other side like that. So basically now you got this bungee cord that's holding these arms in. So as you're going down the road, and these things, I mean, they bounce around like crazy when you're going down the road. I mean, they're up and down. Um, normally I would suggest taking them off and storing them in your vehicle during travel. Um, there was one trip where I honestly didn't have room in our SUV when we went down south, so I had to leave them in the kayak and I watched them in the rear view mirror. Them things were just bouncing all over the place. I really suggest taking them off the kayak when you, you know, trailer your vehicle. So anyway, if you have to leave it on the kayak, don't worry, this is gonna hold it in because if every time these things do bounce, it's just gonna pull them in tighter instead of them working their way out. It's a much better solution than the original thumb screw that they had, which had massive problems. So anyway, that's it. That's the Boondocks landing gear installed on a 2019 Outback. Now, with that being said, there is one other thing I wanted to cover. These wheels, they work great if you're on a hard surface. Now, if you're on sand or if you're beach launching, or even if you're at a boat ramp where sometimes sand gets up on the boat ramp, these don't work all that great. That's when the old balloon tires come in. This is a necessary thing when you're launching on sand. Now these came off of my Hobie cart that I purchased years ago. There is an adapter kit that you can get from Wheelies, which is the company that manufactures these wheels, that basically changes the center bushing out here to where it'll fit the Boondocks arms. It's like 20 bucks. 
So I didn't have to buy these wheels from Boondocks. Now Boondocks sells these wheels. They're like 70 bucks a piece. So if you're ever gonna be launching, going out you know, through surf or launching on a beach or any time that you're not on a hard surface, you gotta have these. So anyway, that's it. That's a Boondocks landing gear set up on my brand new 2019 Outback. One step closer to getting this thing into order. Thanks for watching. Peace.